everyone, it's Justine. Welcome to a new video featuring the brand new release from Concord and Ninth. Today I'm going to go into how I go about creating a set of cards or sitting down for a craft session when I don't really have an idea in mind for the products. So I'm going to be featuring the brand new Concord and Ninth release and then my process as to how I go about doing that. Now since I'm talking about sitting down and not knowing what to do with my card making supplies, I just wanted to mention briefly that I have a brand new class called the Technique Resource Binder. And if you haven't signed up yet, this is my solution to that problem. So if you've ever sat down and not knew what to do with the supplies you have on hand, then this is a perfect class for you, from beginners to advanced, to put together a binder of techniques so that whenever you're stuck, you have this resource binder to look at with hundreds of techniques inside in order to figure out what you're going to do with your card making that day. The sign up link is below in the video description. As you're watching this video, I have actually just landed in Germany for vacation, but don't worry, I have scheduled videos for you the whole time that I'm here. Alright, diving into the brand new products for this release. Here is Concord and Ninth scent incentive set, All My Love. It has the sentiments, you're just lovely, always in my heart, love you, all my love, and this really cute heart outline of flowers that's free with the $60 purchase today, and all month actually. Then we go along to the So Pretty stamp and die set. So this is, can be worked individually or together. And there are lots of different sentiments here and there is also thread. So if you like to stitch, this is a really cool way to stitch on your cards. Comes with lots of different sentiments like thinking of you, hello, um, congratulations, happy birthday, Mr. and Mrs. Thank you, some flowers. And you can go ahead and stitch that partial diamond, hello, or florals. And there is a video as well as you can see in the top right-hand corner on the Concord and Ninth channel on how to use that. Now the rest of the things here that I'm showing you I have used in the video today. This is called Toucan Paradise, a really fun set here with a toucan stamp set that you can stamp in multiple pieces. Also has some leaves here in both an outline form and solid. Comes with the sentiments toucan of appreciation, so like the <laughs> token of appreciation, kind of a play on words. The next one is Joyful Tiles, and this one here is really fun because you can have joy, enjoy, and then it has a couple of other sentiments like may you always find joy, it's your, uh, enjoy, it's your day, enjoy the little things, and it also has coordinating dies for the sentiments. Also in the dies, you can see in the bottom right corner, these, there's these little four point things. Those coordinate with actually a stencil set in this release as well. This is one of the tropical dies that could be used as a standalone. You could also use it with these toucan dies if you wanted to. So these dies here are not coordinating with the stamp set. That's why they're still solid. Um, they stand on their own so you could cut out cardstock. And then the sentiment says good vibes on it in the typical Concord and Ninth script. Now the releases from Concord and Ninth are never without a turnabout stamp. This is the Tropical Vibes turnabout stamp. It has some pineapples, leaves, very, very cute. And you could use this, as I said, you could use this to sort of match up with it or if you wanted to, um, it's completely up to you. And then lastly is one of the stencils. It comes with two stencils in the package and these are turnabout stencils. Turnabout stencils are far more easier to use than turnabout stamps if you think that um, you've had difficulty with the stamps. All you do is line them up in the corner of your cardstock and turn each time and you'll see what this one does. It gives this sort of pattern regardless, and you can turn up to four times to get a full set. And then this um, hexagon here, I thought it was um, circles at first, is absolutely adorable when it's all done. So I'm going to show you right away how to use this stencil and then we'll get started into the making the cards. Okay, so all you need to do when you're doing this is grab a couple of pieces of washi tape or some purple tape like I'm using and you're going to just line up your stencil with the corner of your cardstock. This makes it really flexible because you can do any size cardstock with the turnabout stencils as long as it doesn't exceed the 6x6, six six, the size of the stencil itself. I'm going to go in with some All That Jazz ink from Catherine Pooler and a brush from Picket Fence. I'm going to brush in the color. All you need to do after that is just simply go ahead and wipe off the color on your stencil. I just spritz a little water on it and wipe it with a microfiber cloth. And then you can go ahead and turn it. Now if you've forgotten which way your stencil was, you can just line it up like before to see where your area was. 
Then you turn it 90 degrees, so to the right I usually turn, but you can turn to the left too. And then I'm going to readjust the tape and add my second color. This is a way that you're able to sort of stamp a background, but have so many different colors on it, which is not really possible to do with a background stamp without some extensive masking. The next color I'm using is Tiki Torch from Catherine Pooler, followed by Coral Cabana and Grass Skirt. Each time, I'm just going ahead, wiping off the stencil and turning it 90 degrees. Just making sure that I'm turning in the same direction each time. So now I'm moving on to the Coral Cabana color, which is one of my favorite colors. And I'm going to go ahead and add that here to the stencil. And then I'm going to finish off with the final color. So these are really just cool, creative ways to use the stencil. I love the turnabout stamp stencils and I hope they keep coming out with more. There's only a few out right now and I absolutely love them. Each time that I use them, I fall in love with them. And I've used them in my card baking videos several times, which shows that I keep you going back to these products. And what I like about this particular one here is I think the background looks great right now. I don't even have to do that fourth one if I don't want to. And remember, it's always pretty easy to see where your stencils lined up. And uh, it's, it's not really too hard to make a mistake. But if you think like you're going to make a mistake, grab a permanent marker. And in the corner of each one of the stencils, you can put a number one, two, three, and four to help you figure out which one's next. The turnabout stamps are made like this, the transparency sheets. And I think that's such a great idea. Okay, so going ahead and now my background is all finished. I'm going to just show you what the second background looks like rather than going into how I made it because it's made the same way. Now this technique really gives you some inky fingers so just be careful when you lift this off and you're going to go touch the white space that you wash your hands first or at least wipe them clean because you can get fingerprints on them. So this is the second background and both of these stencils come in a two pack so that's really fun you get both of them for the one low price. So what I like to do when I'm a little unsure about what I'm going to do with the supplies on hand is I like to make some backgrounds first. So you can see I had stencils in that release so I stenciled out a couple backgrounds. I'm now going in and I'm actually going to be using the same color palette so I don't have to think too much about colors. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to blend out a background. And I thought, you know, for that maybe that toucan set or something where I have to have critters or things like that, it's always good to have a nice inked up background. So using the picket fence brushes, once again, I started with Coral Cabana, worked my way into Tiki Torch, blending until I was happy and until I got sort of a gradual fade into white. My last background here is going to be the turnabout stamp. So what I did was I flipped to the black part of my Misty here. I laid down the transparency sheet that comes with the turnabout stamp. And what you need to do is you need to place the stamp, stamp side down, on top of the transparency. So you have to line up the leaves and the pineapples and things like that. For this particular turnabout stamp, you need to be pretty accurate because when you stamp, it's going to stamp the pineapples in one color and the stem or the leaves of the pineapple or whatever you call it that's on top of the pineapple, the green stuff, um, on top. It's going to have to fit together, obviously. So you need to be fairly accurate with this one, which always involves me getting my head in the way. So once you're satisfied with that, you can flip your Misty Grid back over and then you're going to grab a turnabout jig or you can create your own jig by grabbing a six by six sheet of paper and drawing an X from corner to corner. There's also an X from corner to corner on this turnabout jig that Concord and Knight sells. And so I'm just lining up the black X with the perforated X on the jig. Then I can pick it up with my Misty stamping tool or if you own a stamping platform, that's fine too take off the transparency sheet, and I'm ready to begin stamping. I'm going to grab my card panel here and I'm adding some removable adhesive, which is also sold by Concord and Ninth, and then I'm going to add it and there's perforated lines to show you where to add your A2 size cardstock. So it can't really be easier to line everything up since it has lines there for you. Next up, you're going to start with your first color. It doesn't matter which one you start off with and you're going to ink up your stamp and stamp it as normal. So I'm using that all that jazz ink once again and I'm just tap tapping all over and I'm closing the door here and just pushing down on my Misty applying even pressure and lifting up. So now I have the first bit of the stamp. I'm going to turn it and now in my stamp jig it also says I'm on turn number two so color number two 
and I wiped off my stamp as best I could and now I'm going in with the Coral Cabana. What I love about Catherine Pooler inks when I'm doing this technique is that they don't really contaminate at all so I don't have to worry about really cleaning my stamp extremely well in between colors. So now I turned my jig to number three and I'm going in with the Tiki Torch and stamping with uh, again the even pressure on my Misty and you can see the design slowly coming together. You can also see that the first bit of the pineapples have now stamped with very minimal space in between. Last up is grass skirt and now it's all finished. I think the background looks absolutely cool, very tropical looking and so much fun. So now when I'm finished creating backgrounds and I'm not sure what to do, the next thing to do is to create some sentiments that I can use on the card or stamp out any of the critters or things like that to see if I can use any of them. So I'm going to start off with the Wild About You in some All Jet Jazz ink. Then I'm going to go in with some of those Joyful Tiles ones. And I think this one I'm going to end up creating some really big sentiments, perhaps on a white background. And so I just went in and I made sure I had enough room so that when I die cut them, it's going to be okay. And I decided to stamp this twice, one so I can use the joy sentiment and one so I could use enjoy. And both of them cut out individually with the dies. So just keep that in mind. You don't need to attach the EN right now. You can simply just die cut it separately. So that makes it a little bit easier because I was thinking, how am I going to line up this enjoy? But I realized they're two separate dies, so you can keep them separated. I also wanted to go in briefly how to stamp this toucan. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and stamped to him in black and the bird is just a very simple stamp. But because the die comes in one piece, you need to be able to do this. So I wanted to show you a bit of a misty hack on how you can do this. So I went ahead and I die cut it now. And now what I have is I have both the toucan as well as a window where I cut out the toucan. So I am gonna use the window to help me line up my stamps. So I'm going to place the toucan back inside its die cut here and I'm going to place the nose on top and that way I know where I need to stamp it exactly in order for it to work. If I were to try to freehand this I would probably mess it up so I decided to keep him the way it is. So now if my toucan moves I can use the magnet obviously if I wanted to. If I don't want to that's fine too. I'm going to go ahead and grab my Tiki Torch ink keeping the colors generally all the same. That's one of my strategies too when I sit down to card make is I'll use the same colors for all the cards that I make that day and that way everything looks really cool when I photograph it because it's kind of like a set. I can then use it as a gift set if I want to because all of them again have that same coordinating color palette and as well it keeps me from having to make a ton of choices when I sit down to card make. Lastly you have just the last bit of his nose here which I decided to stamp in black as well and it's all finished. So now you have that perfectly die cut toucan with all the steps. And you can see now that I have a ridiculous amount of dies that I've used at this point to die cut everything in my stash. And I use this diamond from Spellbinders so that I don't lose any and it sits on my desk as kind of a paperweight. And I absolutely love that. That way nothing goes missing. So one last thing I wanted to do since I wanted to cut out some of those standalone dies is I decided to make my own ink pads. So I grabbed my four inks from Catherine Pooler and I'm just doing a direct to paper technique. Not worrying too much about harsh lines as once it seeps into the paper you probably won't see them anyway. And as well, I'm going to be die cutting smaller things so you're not going to notice that any sort of harsh lines because they just won't show up. So just make sure that while you're doing this that you keep the four colors quite separate because what's going to end up happening is your ink pads are going to get contaminated if you go into the inks. So I'm just grabbing all those coordinating dies that have the good vibes set as well. I'm going to die cut them using this paper now that I've made. So it's like custom DOI cardstock. Now I have all my die cuts sitting in front of me. I'm going to lay out all my backgrounds and now I'm just going to simply go ahead and play and see what I can come up with for card designs. So I'm now spreading out my die cuts, checking out what I have, thinking of the sentiments that I have. I did decide to add a fifth background to the cards as just a plain white background because I really felt that that enjoy stamp was going to be too big and busy for the cards that I've created. So I added that enjoy here and make sure you don't forget about the I or the dot on top of the J. Added the wild about you, so I'm just seeing do I have enough sentiments, do I need to stamp out some sentiments, what's going on. And so I've just added them to the cards and of course I could rearrange if I don't like them. It's completely up to me. 
and then I'm adding the dots to the J's and then adding a couple of these flowers here in there as pretty embellishments. And then I was looking at that toucan and thinking, okay, he needs something to sit on, first of all. It does come with a perch or a little branch for him to sit on as a stamp, as well as a coordinating die. So I kind of debated about what I was going to do there. And I grabbed some of my black ink here and I decided to ink up the branch where the bird would be. Sorry, my head got in the way. And uh, I decided that was going to be easier than die cutting and I think a little bit more natural too because if I were to die cut it, there would be right around the branch and I always find that that looks funny with coordinating dies. Added a couple of leaves to the bottom here and it's all good to go aside from a sentiment for that card. And then I went ahead as well and I decided that I needed to stamp the sentiment. So I love the toucan of my appreciation. I think puns are so funny and I think this looks really cute in the corner. So I was able to also see approximately where my toucan was going to sit and I knew I had enough room for this sentiment here in the bottom corner but it had to be quite flush to the bottom of the corner. I knew that. So now it was just a matter of really gluing things on and adding a couple of words here and there. One of the sentiments I did end up cutting because I thought it was going to look better in two different pieces. So I have the enjoy here and then I cut up these three words so that they were all separate. I attached them to a block and stamped them. I could have also done this with my Misty tool but I wanted to get it done quickly. And I always find lining up lots of stamps is a little bit difficult, so I just grabbed it on the block. And then I stamped the It's Your Day, even though it's a bit crooked. It's not a big deal. I think it looks kind of cool. Now, I know I needed something to go with that joy, because just a card that says joy is a bit strange. So I put the May You Always Find on a piece of scrap white paper that I cut the toucan out of. I just cut it down into a small rectangle and added that just above the joy here on this card. And I think that looks really nice as well. And I think my cards are really starting to come together other than just gluing everything down. So I've created my backgrounds. I created the sentiments. I die cut everything. I put together my cards by rearranging them all together at once. Now it's fine, final embellishments. So I grabbed a Nouveau Drops and just added some of these to the front of some of the cards that I thought had a little bit too much white space. I could have also gone in with something like a glitter pen and... Uh, you know, went over the sentiments if I had wanted to. It's just really up to you at that point what you want to do for some fine tuning. But I think some Nouveau Drops always just add a little bit of extra something and I love the way that they look when they're all finished. So let's take a look at the final five cards that we created. So once again, the die cut sentiment, enjoy, it's your day, with a couple of the flowers from the standalone die set and some Nouveau embellishments. Followed by the toucan of my appreciation with the toucan cut out there, a couple of leaves from the standalone set and the Nouveau Drops. The stencil turnabout background with some of the standalone dies and the wild about you sentiment. Then we have the joy, may you always find joy with the turnabout background in lots of different colors. And finally, the very clean and simple good vibes card with the stencil turnabout as well. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Here is a subscribe button and if you want to check out another video featuring Concord and Ninth Inspiration, I have an inspirational video here for you. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.